My name is David Guthrie and I work for a company called Tent with a View Safaris in Tanzania. My relationship with Africa began back in 1986 and had the most incredible experience of my life. So in Tanzania, I imagine most people have heard of Zanzibar, but very few would understand that Tanzania is Tanganyika and Zanzibar. Dividing up Tanzania, we have the coastal area where we have some beautiful beaches on the coast itself, Zanzibar, or the archipelago, Zanzibar and Pemba, or Nguja Island and Pemba Island, and Sadani National Park. Then, if you move north to the famous northern part emanating from Arusha, you have Kilimanjaro Mountain, then Tarangiri National Park, Lake Manyara National Park, the Ngorongoro Crater, and Serengeti. And then in the south, we have the Southern Circuit, which is Salu Game Reserve, Ruaha National Park and Mikumi. Most of you will have heard about Zanzibar. Zanzibar, of course, is one of the most romantic, evocative names on the planet and clearly a big draw for a lot of people. A lot of people go to Tanzania to climb Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, the highest uh, freestanding mountain in the world. So that draws an enormous number of people just for that particular activity. Well, the Serengeti really is the ultimate park. The holy grail of safari holidays is the Mara River crossing. Now, this is an annual movement of the wildebeest with zebra and some topi, something like two million animals that move in a clockwise direction around the ecosystem. So the migration starts the year, or from certainly from the middle of December, the wildebeest and the migrating animals are all down here in the southeast of the ecosystem, what's significant there is that they're carving. So usually towards the back end of February, they will carve, and of course that brings in a lot of predators. In April and May, they move central and then across into the Western Corridor. So from the middle of May through June into early July, the bulk are here and a small group goes straight north. Then from the middle of July, they all head up through here and the entire group then congregate around the Mara River here, going through Tanzania and into Kenya, and they spend the next four months in this area here, before coming back down the eastern side. So the crocodiles just have a feast. There are thousands and thousands of vultures on the side. It's the whole area is full of predators, all gorging themselves on this incredible, incredible spectacle. The main fleet of bush rovers they follow the migration. They go in and they make a seasonal camp where we think the mig migration will be. A spot totally away from everyone else, unique game drive tracks, but still fantastic position. You just sit on your balcony and have an entirely private wildebeest crossing. And that is the magic of them. In effect, this thing can drive anywhere we need it to go and can fold out to make a pretty luxurious room, accommodation. The shock is that the people turn around and they, they look in the back of the Land Rover and see this panelled bathroom with a full bath at the end of it. Then coming out of there, the spiral, metal spiral staircase goes up onto the balcony. And when you get up there, what you'll meet is an open fronted room. So sitting on the balcony, people will be able to actually witness the crossings right in front without even getting in a car. And that is gold in the Serengeti. We take with us a lovely little mess tent. You can feel like you're in a very comfortable little restaurant with excellent food served, beautiful dining area. So everything is taken care of. So you will want for nothing. The ice in your G&T, everything is available because it all goes with it in the kit. And what we've tried to do is build a base of unique individual type operations that cover all the main areas of Tanzania. So we have our own camp on the north coast of Zanzibar. We have two camps in Sudani National Park on the coast. We have a camp in the massive Salu Game Reserve in the south. And we have a camp on Lake Victoria, just on the edge of the Serengeti. And we have our unique bush rovers that then float around the Serengeti, making sure you get up close and personal with the migration. Zanzibar is one of the most romantic destinations on the planet. So, so if someone was simply looking for a beautiful beach to go to visit, and perhaps, connect it with a day or two on safari, then clearly that's a good option. Our main lodge um, on, on the edge of Sudani, and it has a, a large private beach, a good kilometre long. There are 11 rooms. There's a, there's a honeymoon suite called the Venus suite. Then there are 
seven other twin and double rooms and three family suites. Now 12 kilometres south of there is Elephant Island. This is our private conservancy which is about eight square kilometres and at its centre is the island tower in the middle of what we call Bam's Camp and that has two suites and a restaurant bar and a crow's nest. Lake Victoria is a wonderful expanse of water, a beautiful cultural area with probably the greatest birding certainly in Tanzania and I would imagine one of the greatest birding spots in the world. Little Okavango has four, four rooms, they're all family rooms so they can, they can cater for families of up to five and it has a restaurant, the Bird Window Restaurant which allows you fantastic opportunities to watch the birds from that area. And we have a beautiful two-hour canoe ride that will now take you through these channels with amazing bird life and it makes a wonderful end piece to the safari element of the trip before you might head off to the beach. Salu, of course, is, is our southern gem. This vast park um, still has very few numbers of people going through it. It offers safaris. Because it's a game reserve, not a national park, it allow, you're allowed to do foot safaris. We offer, obviously, a variety of packages, which generally what we're trying to combine is the best of safaris with some cultural immersion and beach elements. So, for instance, we would go into the Serengeti in the Bush Rover for the migration, you then go to Lake Victoria for a cultural immersion with the fishing villages and get the chance to see the bird life from, the, from your canoe and then fly across to Zanzibar or to Sedani on the coast and combine that so that you can have some beach time. Now there are very good connections these days from the UK to Tanzania. A lot of the major airlines go in there. Right, so for all the further information you need, everything will be available on the Extranet page um, within the Travel Council's network and if you'd like any further backup you can always check the Tent with a View website. There's a lot of detail and videos and sample itineraries on there as well which may help you. You may be wondering who might take a trip like this. Well I think that between all the various products we cover just about every niche as it were. So even those of you that have quite an experience of Africa, you've been several times before, I think there is enough diversity, there's enough new angles, new places to visit new ways to visit them that I think you'd find some very interesting options. Wherever you go on safari there is one top tip. Invest in a good pair of binoculars. It's essential for great wildlife viewing.